Good afternoon, and welcome to Urban Review, the show that is brought to you by the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development. Uh, we are a drug-free community grantee, coalition grantee, and uh, we are very happy to be here today. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is offer a disclaimer. We are partially funded by the Office of National Drug Control Policy. And the views and opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the National Drug Control Policy, uh, Office of National Drug Control Policy, or the White House. Uh, the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development is the sponsor of the Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development, and we operate on Detroit's west side. Our mission is to, is to improve outcomes for west side Detroit youth and their families by establishing and strengthening community collaboratives that promote positive youth development and community revitalization through the prevention of youth substance abuse and other problem behaviors. And we are very, very happy to be operating on Detroit's west side. We've had a very exciting past three weeks since the last time we were here with you. We went down to uh, Dallas, Texas with the uh, Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America for our <laughs> National Drug Control uh, pop uh, for our National Academy and our training to uh, learn how to be a better functioning coalition. Uh, we also spent an exciting week yesterday. We were over at uh, the Doubletree Hotel with the uh, 2019 uh, annual meeting of the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority uh, with uh, Dr. Willie Brooks and uh, Mr. Bernard Parker giving us updates on what's going on uh, with the world of uh, mental health uh, prevention, substance abuse prevention and uh, treatment and recovery. And then today uh, we had the pleasure of being out at the Burton Manor for the fourth annual Opioid Abuse and Heroin Overdose Solution Summit. And uh, there we had some very interesting information about what's going on in the world of substance abuse treatment and recovery. And one of the speakers uh, yesterday uh, was none other, or today, was none other than Dr. Grenade Dudley of the Youth Connection. And I am proud and happy to have her here on our show with us today. Uh, Dr. Dudley has been a very, very good supporter of the work that we're doing. She's functioned as a mentor and a collaborator uh, with the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development and helped to birth uh, the Coalition right. for Urban Youth and Family Development. Uh, we actually became a part of the Love Detroit Youth Co uh, Coalition uh, to learn how to uh, operate a coalition, and uh, Dr. Dudley has been a great teacher. So welcome aboard. Why, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Arbuckle. We're you so know, happy to have you. It's like the proud parent that we've got this other coalition that's doing the good things in the community, that's making the difference and taking care of our kids. Fantastic. Well, let's start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background and about the Youth Connection. Well, I am excited. Excited. I, I've been with the Youth Connection for over 21 years, Fantastic. so we're legal now, we're of age. Uh -huh. But we've worked hard. Um, we were originally funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to improve the health and safety of metropolitan area youth That's by fantastic. doing systems change, looking at the things that are contributing in our communities to keep our kids stagnated or ways in which we can use the system to engage and encourage them to move forward. So we did a lot of work around getting kids involved in after school programs Fantastic. and also so we asked our kids and data. Now, you know, every time I talk to you, I want to know about the data. Yes. 
We use our data to find out what do our kids want to do? What is it that they want us to do? And how do they want to get involved in the programs that we're providing? And so one of the things that we found is our kids are asking us, wait a minute, we want jobs. Okay. We want opportunities to have careers. Mm -hmm. We want to know what else is out there. So at the Youth Connection, we started one of our signature programs, with this, which is the Youth Connection Career Academies. Fantastic. And then we found that, wait a minute, if I work at getting these kids jobs, one of the challenges that we have, especially in the metropolitan Detroit area, are our kids are not keeping those jobs right. because of, one, not understanding what it takes to get them, to, to keep successful. them, to hold them, to right. be successful. So we revamped our program to make sure that we taught them those kinds of things and made sure that they knew what it was to call in if you're not coming, call in if you're going to be late, and make sure that you show up every day ready to work. That is fantastic. And I know that uh, you all have also uh, developed some additional programs uh, around recreation and youth development to keep the kids engaged and active mm -hmm. and doing positive things rather than negative things in the community. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. We've worked with you and your youth. We yes. want to make sure that our kids are also giving back. Mm -hmm. They're responsible for their communities. And I guess it's one of the things that we don't ever want to continue to see happening is that, oh, somebody else is going to come in my community and and clean it up. Right. We want our kids to take responsibility and pride in where they live and who they are and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we do a lot of community service. We make sure that kids are engaged. But we also have a partnership with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. That's the one. And they have come and said, hey, we need more minority and urban youth to serve in this pipeline for employment. Mm -hmm. But we've got to expose our kids to the great outdoors, to right. the environment, to make sure that, hey, this is what's out there and these are the opportunities that exist. So we have taken our kids on a variety of outdoor adventures, so to speak. Yes. Um, I think I've taken some of your kids with us yes, as well. You have, and me as well. And, and you, and yeah, I got yes, you out there. Yes. So with the National Park Service, the River Raisin National Park Service, we've taken, this is our fifth year, so we've taken over four thousand youth wow. kayaking on the Huron River. And that is an exciting And we brought adventure. most of that's them back. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. right. I was out there. That is truly an exciting adventure and I, just, just a real feather in your cap uh, that you were able to develop that program with the National Park uh, uh, Association. And not only are you exposing our young people to uh, the great outdoors and giving them a learning experience about the Rising River and the natural resources, but it's also, as you indicated, a job pipeline uh, because some of our young people have been park rangers. Absolutely. And, uh, that, is, that is so phenomenal. And something that they did not know before. Because one of the things we emphasize with our partners and our employment partners, wait a minute, how can my kid leave the summer from the summer youth employment program with credentials, right. with certifications, which with ways in which their resume begins to build on their experiences and what they have and the kinds of things that they have earned and gained through that process. So these kids with the National Park Service, um, it, it, it initially we paid for them to be the rangers that were out there. Okay. Then they get called back the next summer, unsubsidized now, right. and this is full time. They're working now full-time and our certified kayakers. So I have one of my young ladies now as a certified level three kayaker. That is phenomenal. And I, to our listening audience, I uh, know that some of you like to interact with the show and there's the opportunity to uh, go on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and then go to the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development. When you get to that Facebook page, you will see a link for WHPR TV or RJ Watkins Live. RJ Watkins Live. Just click on that link and you will have an opportunity to interface directly with the show. And I'm going to look over here at the big board. Uh, we've got a couple of, uh, we've got a comment from a Miss Linda Evans. Thank you for watching, Linda. Uh, we also have a comment from, I think, Jeff Griffin. So thank you for watching, Jeff. Uh, but we really, really enjoy working with the Youth Connection, with the work that you're doing. And after we come back from this commercial break, we're going to ask you to tell us a little bit about the Drug-Free Community Coalition that you have uh, through the Youth Connection called the Love Detroit Youth Coalition and some of the great work that you're doing over there. So we'll be right back uh, shortly after this commercial break. Thank you for watching the show and just go to the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development. That's it right up there. 
go there and uh, go to Facebook and pull up that Center for Urban Youth and Family Development and look for R.J. Watkins Live. Click on the link and interface with the show directly. We'll be right back. <laughs> The non-medical use of prescription drugs, including opioids, is a growing concern in our communities, affecting all ages, including our youth. If the medication wasn't prescribed to you or has expired, don't take it. If your name isn't on the bottle, it's not meant for you to swallow. Addiction is real and lives are being ruined. Or worse yet, lost. Visit PreventionDetroit.org opioids to find prescription drop. Welcome back to Urban Review, uh, brought to you by the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development and the Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development. And we are here today with Dr. Grenae Dudley from the Youth Connection and the, exec uh, the project director for the uh, Love Detroit Youth Coalition, uh, which is a drug-free community coalition operating on Detroit's west east side. And they are very similar to our, uh, are exactly the same as our Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development, which operates on Detroit's west side. And in fact, we'll be having our monthly coalition meeting today at 6 p.m. That meeting is going to take place at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church, which is located at 18700 James Cousin Highway uh, in Detroit, Michigan. And if you can't make the meeting, feel free to call in. The call-in number is 712 seven seven zero five five zero five once again that's seven one two seven seven zero five five zero five and the access code for our meeting is three five nine three one nine that's three five nine i mean three nine five three one nine once again that's three nine five three one nine call in and participate and be a part of our Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development meeting. And now we're going to go to Dr. Dudley and have her tell us a little bit uh, about the Love Detroit Youth Coalition and the work that they're doing on Detroit's east side. Right. Um, it's Love Detroit Prevention Coalition okay. because that's one of the – this is National Prevention Month. Absolutely. And we got to celebrate that. And we want to give a shout-out to um, our brother from Spectrum, yes. uh, uh, Ken, Mr. Kenyatta, who is the Preventionist of the Year. Yes. And so that, that those are the kinds of things that are really exciting because of our partners and all the work that we're doing. We want to make sure that we stay connected and say, hey, one, good job, mm -hmm. and then how much more can we do? Absolutely. Um, so part of what the Love Detroit Prevention Coalition coalition is doing is working on issues of opioid marijuana and underage drinking these are issues that impact when we talked about earlier about those jobs that right. we were talking about these are all you have worked a lot with kids that have in foster care or who are aging out of foster care and we know that this is also something that they struggle with absolutely um, one of the highest risk factors for absolutely that population. for homelessness for all of those other kinds of things but we want to make our tagline for the youth connection is connect youth to brighter futures and it is so critically important that we do that and we mm -hmm. work hard to make a difference because all we need to do is connect one right. you know because that one kid could go on and oh my goodness who knows what difference that they can make and just like you we have kids that call back and if it hadn't been for our program right. I wouldn't be here and and to thank you so what the love Detroit prevention coalition has done is to look at some of the issues that are impacting our community. We operate on the data. We look for ways to say, how can we make a difference here? Uh, one of the concerns that we have, and we have our kids engaged. We have our kids going out and doing what are called six-word stories. Right. Hemingway said you can tell a story in, in six, six words. words. All right, baby shoes never worn for sale. So that story can end any, any way. The baby either had too many shoes or the baby may have passed away and no wow. longer need those shoes. So our kids collected these six-word stories and we made them part of our commercials. We made them part of our outreach and we made them part of the ways in which our kids can express themselves about what substance use is doing to impact their communities. Right, right. 
And I know that uh, you guys have had some very, very impactful and tremendous events over the last uh, 12 months, in oh fact. Oh, my goodness. And why don't you give us some of the highlights of what you've done and what you plan to do? We've had the, the town halls. I think all of our coalitions are making sure that we can engage our communities. Mm -hmm. And we have targeted specific zip codes. You have a specific... Ah, specific zip code area right. that you're working in and we've targeted the zip codes on the east side of Detroit and the thing that's so important for us is to make sure that how do we know we've made community level change mm -hmm. how do we know we've made that community impact right. so part of what we've done is to have these community town halls to get our kids to come and to say hey here's some of the things that we can do to make a difference mm -hmm. um, we're excited that we trained our kids in Narcan mm -hmm. This opioid epidemic, some of us think, well, it's not really affecting our communities, but we but it know is. it is really impacting our communities when, what did I say today, 11% of our high schoolers and about 7% of our middle schoolers have used a non-registered um, prescription, an opioid prescription that was not made out to them right. in the last 30 days. So these are things that we have to educate our communities, our parents, and our kids that these are dangerous drugs. Right. So our kids are also witnessing overdoses. So one of the things that we have done is train our kids on how they can save a life. And they wear with pride these T-shirts that said, I can save a life, ask me how. So they've been trained on Narcan. And mm -hmm. if someone is experiencing an opioid or a heroin overdose, our youth are going to be able to save them. That's fantastic. That is tremendous. And you know, uh, part of the uh, work of the coalition is to develop uh, the data, as you indicated, and to create a logic model that actually identifies what the uh, issue is in the community, identify the root causes of those issues, and then uh, talk about the local conditions that are impacting your specific community or the zip code in which you're working in it. As I indicated, I just recently uh, got back from Dallas, <laughs> Texas, participating in the uh, Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America uh, National Training Academy, and we looked at our uh, uh, logic model for the work that we're doing on the west side. And when we talked about uh, the, our issue, we were saying, hey, it's marijuana use by youth. And then we said, well, what, what are the factors that are causing that, or how do you know that that's a reality? And just as you said, we looked at the uh, CDC's 2015 uh, database, and it indicated that 11th graders in the city of Detroit uh, are using uh, marijuana at 22.5 percent, or that's 5 percent higher than the national average. And then we found out that 36.6 percent of the youth in the city of Detroit uh, on the west side over in our 48238 zip code area are being exposed to uh, marijuana and being offered to marijuana by someone on the school grounds. So then we look back and say, <laughs> what are the root causes? Well, obviously, it's availability. How do we substantiate that? Well, the Michigan Pro Profile for Healthy Youth in 2015, that survey indicated that 55% of the youth at Mumford High School indicated that marijuana is easy to get. Any and, kid in any school can tell yeah, you how, when, where they can get marijuana crazy. and also um, where, where and when they use it. Absolutely. We had our kids, you know, just sort of draw it out, you know, make us a design. And so what did we see? We saw the parking lots where they would smoke in the cars. We saw under the bleachers, you know, right. on, the, on, the, on the football or, or, the, uh, or the outdoor fields. But the thing that was so interesting to us is that there's a truck that comes around to the schools that sell edibles. Yeah. All right, so you have no idea that they may or may not be using marijuana because they're eating, eating it, ingesting it, smoking it, vaping it, whatever it is. Right. And so part of our challenge then is to how do we communicate to the youth about the dangers of this drug? Mm -hmm. It's one thing, we know it's, it's, it has... Um, I guess its medical use mm -hmm. has been approved by our state. Right. And I guess come June 1st, recreational use is right. going to be approved. But it's still illegal for youth under the age of 21. Absolutely. It's still illegal for them. But the other thing we know, by them smoking or continuing to smoke, it has an impact on brain development. Mm -hmm. It has an impact on their ability to get and keep a job. Right. So what we then say now, I'm this old person that they're looking at and going, yeah, really, okay, now a problem but what we've done is gone out and said let the kids talk to the kids about 
what they can do to make a difference. And we're finding that our kids talking to each other, learning, understanding, and going out and saying, this is our community and we have to make it better. That is fantastic. And that uh, demonstrates the importance of the town hall meetings that we're having, of our youth advisory councils yep. that we are creating, so that the youth can communicate with each other and there can be positive peer pressure, not always negative peer pressure. So that's a good thing. And I just want to uh, let our viewing audience know and our listening audience know that if you want to listen to the show uh, in the future, all you've got to do is say, Alexa, uh, turn on <laughs> WHPR-TV, and you'll right. be able to listen to the show. And those of you that uh, are trying to get in on Facebook, just go to Facebook, the Center for Urban Youth and Family Development, and you will see an icon for uh, R.J. Watkins Live. I think uh, a couple of people went to it and didn't see it, but it's there now. And you can click on that and uh, be able to pull up the show and make your comments, and we will respond to them. Uh, and I don't see any comments right now, so we'll keep going with what we were talking uh, about. We'll just make our about. own comments. We'll make our we'll own, make comments. Our own That's comments. That's right. We're Fantastic. like, hey, we, we're used um, to this. So I know that you have some activities coming up in the near future. Why don't you tell us about those? August 17th is our after-school, back-to-school, off-to-college fair. And one thing I'm really excited about, and I invite all of our listening audiences and our viewing audiences to come out mm -hmm. on Belle Isle, on beautiful Belle Isle. It is free to you. We have uh, vendors who are getting and getting your kids enrolled in after school programs. We also will have colleges that are there to say, hey, this is what you want to look at in being recruited to go on to college. We'll have folks from the skilled trades there to say these are the opportunities wow. and the jobs that will be there. But you know what's really exciting? Um, at our last town hall during the DEA take back, we brought in this huge lung and we brought in a facilitator and an educator who was uh, EMS. Mm -hmm. And he then talked to the kids about the challenges of what your lungs look like. So the kids got to walk through the lung and wow. they said, when you smoke, mm -hmm. uh, when you use opioids or any of those kinds of things, one of the challenges is that you need to see firsthand what that looks like and how that impacts the, the, okay. and your, your lungs. So I'm hoping also to bring in the brain. And so there's this walk-through brain that's going to be huge, but then you can see by walking through the brain the kinds of things that can impact your brain okay. and uh, the challenges from using drugs or vaping or being sick in any way. And so we're trying to promote health and wellness, and part of that is saying, wait a minute, you don't need to smoke, you don't need to get high. There are other ways in which we can take you kayaking right, and then maybe exactly. bring you back. All right. Well, we've got a couple of uh, comments here. We have one from uh, an individual by the name of Mr. Jeff Griffin, and he's, uh, what are your coalitions doing about prescription drugs in our community? Well, we we just had, uh, we were at, like, as you said before, we were at the opioid summit. And um, one of the things our youth are doing is, is that they're, we're using data. Um, the thing that's scary is that we looked at the data from the high schools and the middle schools that we're serving, and youth as young as eight-year-olds, eight-year-olds are having access to marijuana and to other kinds of drugs. And we know that this marijuana can serve as a gateway to some of the other drugs. Mm -hmm. The thing I think is most important is that we have to make sure that our kids and our families and our parents are aware of the impact of this opioid epidemic. And this isn't something necessarily that, oh my God, these are things that we can deal with with those drug addicts out in the alley and on the street. This is different. Right. These are folks, folks getting addicted to prescription medication that they had as their own prescriptions. Right. And so part of our message is to educate, part of our message is to get our kids to advocate, and part of our message is to say, how do we take action? I, I, I threw down a challenge today, and I'm going to throw it back out to the general public. The DEA have what are called two drug take back days. Right. And we just did one in April. Mm -hmm. You covered the west side of Detroit, right. and, and then you were at the 12th precinct. We have partnered with every single one of our police precincts, and we have a take-back display at each of the precincts. But we encourage the community to say, get rid of these expired and old drugs that you have hanging around the house. One, 
to stop misuse, right. to stop over overuse, to stop diversion, and also to stop deaths. Don't you be the dealer. Don't you be the dealer. Get Absolutely. them out of your house. And All so right. if you come back and join us on October 26th, it's the yeah. next DEA drug take back, and you're going to be there, right? right. You're going to we'll be, be out at there. The Northwest Activity Northwest Center. Northwest Activity Center, you can bring those unexpired drugs. No sharps, no needles, no syrups, none of that, just the pills. You can even bring back the veterinary pills. That's right. Or, or over-the-counter pills. That's that's what we're looking for. Right. And our goal is to increase that take back by 50% over what we did this past April. Absolutely. Even though we increased it by 37% over last October. Okay. Well, this uh, we have another question here. Uh, how are you engaging youth in your community and involving them in your prevention efforts? And I, I think I'll take that okay. one. We just recently had our uh, <coughs> communities talk uh, our Stop Alcohol Abuse Town Hall meeting where we engaged a youth panel uh, to share with us their issues uh, and their perspectives on uh, substance abuse prevention and alcohol. And uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, a special thank you for coming to be the keynote speaker for our town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. So we are showing that uh, we have a commitment from the highest level of government. And then we had uh, individuals like uh, Mary uh, Hubert Yap from uh, the city of Highland Park. We had uh, Wayne County Commissioner. Um, uh, they're visiting us. So uh, we really, really demonstrated that the adults care and we're engaging the youth and letting them get uh, personally involved in this activity. So uh, we are very, very happy that you took the time out to participate and come on the show with us. And we'll be right back uh, after this commercial break with the wrap-up. But uh, thank you so much, Dr. Not Dollar, a for problem. Coming All right. <laughs> All right. We appreciate you so much. We'll be right back after this uh, commercial break to wrap up today's show. Thank The non-medical use of prescription drugs, including opioids, is a growing concern in our communities, affecting all ages, including our youth. If the medication wasn't prescribed to you or has expired, don't take it. If your name isn't on the bottle, it's not meant for you to swallow. Addiction is real and lives are being ruined, or worse yet, lost. Visit PreventionDetroit.org slash opioids to find prescription drugs. Okay, and as we come to a close of today's show, we've had a really exi exciting opportunity to learn about things that are going on in the world of substance abuse prevention, treatment, and recovery on both Detroit's west side and Detroit's east side. I want to thank some of our viewing audience and give a shout out to, uh, let's see, Sharika Johnson, uh, I mean Sharika Gordon. Uh, we want to thank uh, young, young, talented, and gifted. Uh, we want to thank uh, Carla M. Johnson. We want to thank uh, Edgar Lohman. We want to thank uh, Tamika Mallory. We want to thank uh, Deborah Walker. We want to thank uh, Vincent Jones and all of the, uh, Jeff Griffin, Marcel Arbuckle Jr., Calum Gaddis, Makai Snell, and all of the other people that uh, took the time out to watch our show. Uh, remember, if you'd like to be a part of the Coalition for Urban Youth and Family Development, you can call in today. Our call in number is 712 Five five zero five, and the access code is three nine five three one nine. And as we come to the end of our show, we would like to close out with that statement that we always make: When you're up against some trouble, meet it squarely face to face. Th place your feet and set your shoulders. Lift your chin and take a brace. And if the worst is bound to happen, in spite of all that you can do, you may fail, but you may conquer. See it through. Black may be the clouds about you, and your future may seem grim. But don't let your nerves desert you. Keep yourself in fighting trim. And if the worst is bound to happen, in spite of all that you can do, remember running from it will not save you. See it through. Even hope may seem but futile when with troubles you'll be set. But remember, you're simply facing what other men have met. So if you fail, fall, still fighting, don't give up whatever you do. Keep your eyes to the front, your head high to the finish, and see it through. In the same words of Mr. Nelson Mandela, uh, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods there be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud, and under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. 
Beyond this place of raft and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. For it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the captain of the, my fate and the master of my soul. Thank you for watching Urban Review, and we'll see you at the same time next month. God bless you, and have a great month. Thank you.